Before we commence our show this evening, it's important that we christen this stage in honor of recently fallen members of our community. Run DSM is dedicated to creating safe spaces for youth and giving a voice to those who have been silenced. Me. Within the Run DSM community, we always lead with love. Tonight, we would like to show love to those that have fallen by joining hands and bowing our heads in remembrance of Sergeant Tony Bominio, Officer Justin Martin, Yor Jang, Joseph Fuller, and Leah Fawn. Thank, Thank you, you. And, we and we hope, hope you, you enjoy, enjoy the show. She is spring in step. Sunshine through dusty blinds and hugs that are fragrant of old spice. Gospel choir giggle. A soprano spirit with an alto soul, she is home. And not by traditional definition, as in where you sleep or where you stay, but wherever, however, or with whomever, you can recline in every ounce of your own glory. Glory be to God. Her laughter takes me to church and back on a Sunday morning, sometime in April, when the clouds decide to take a day off. She is holy. You see, love and I have the greatest taste. We share playlists and take turns on the aux cord. She winds down power lines for my pleasure and pauses everything to hear my opinion. Love and I have the greatest chemistry. Like all is right in the world when we are one, when we can share milkshakes and sweaters and screenshots of Snapchat memories. Love and I have the greatest memories. The kind we are all prone to dwelling on, they look better in the rear view just because we hadn't gone off road yet when we weren't in but were of. Love and I were the greatest to each other. Our expiration dates wavered in a storm of apology letters and movie ticket stubs. I'm still not quite sure what made us fall out. Love and I had the greatest conversations used to stay up till dawn spilling sleeping bag secrets over strawberries and brown sugar, and we didn't stop talking till there was nothing left to get off of our chests. I used to watch the sun rise through the gaps of her smile and soak every last drop in as if I knew I'd never see another morning. As if I knew I'd be in mourning when she left, it's been a while since we've spoken. No text messages, no missed calls. The music of her voice used to bandage my awkward silences. I'm at the point where her name feels out of place between my teeth. I miss the days when it rolled off my tongue. She don't talk to me for the right reasons. Only makes an appearance about every other season when she sees the colors of my leaves changing. When my branches bend and fruit falls to the ground, she will only sit beneath me when it's ripe. Only rest in my shade when the sun begins to burn. Love loves to catch me off guard. She shape shifts and crouches into shadows. We have been playing hide and go seek since the first time we've met. And every time I stop looking for her, she finds me. I will chase her till I get caught because love has always had a way of catching up to me. Just when I stop running from one thing and into another, I see her face in the scene of all my sins. Love only seems to love me when she thinks that I've been lost. The way we all want shit when we think we can't have it. So maybe love just isn't for me. I still have dreams of angel wings burning. I still have dreams of abandoned sippy cups in a room no one goes into anymore. Little girls aren't supposed to die. Little girls are supposed to get tangled in jump ropes. Little girls are supposed to play doctor. And when little girls play doctor, they can always save the patient. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, you were patient. You waited to be OK. You thought you would be OK. I'm still praying for you to be OK, because my back has become the gurney that you died on. And I carry your corpse with me every spin of these wheels down these hospital hallways of hell we've both been damned to. And I'm sorry I didn't pray for you. I'm sorry I didn't help you through. I'm sorry I had to just sit there. I couldn't be there with you. I've started constructing a life for you, one where you made it out of that room. Wow. 
I can see you blowing out candles on a birthday cake you will never have, biking down hills, falling down, scraped knees, bloody and raw like your eyes that day. I can see you wrapped in warmth in your bed, grave bed, cop and comfort, blanket, blood loss bed. I can see you having a first kiss that wasn't given to death. A first kiss where you could feel your, your heart getting warm, not the hands compressing your chest. And I would say a first kiss where your breath gets caught in your throat and... and a first kiss where your breath gets caught in your throat and your heart skips a beat, but I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. I think I might die if I think about that. If you were still alive, would you remember my face? Like I remember yours? Would I haunt you? Yes! They say home is where you make it, so I've made it right in your arms. So if you leave, my heart would be breaking every time you leave. My home is what you're taking. Homeless until the day ends, I'm begging. Baby, please just hold me until this day ends. 11, 11 hits, I wish to slow time just so I could cherish each and every moment. My home is not a house that you go in with bed furniture and clothes in. No, my home is in your arms with my head on your heart, listening to every beat and how it changes in velocity every time my eyes meet. Despite everything, my Uncle Joey said it best because I nearly crashed when our lips first met. I was a nervous wreck, my heart nearly jumping out of my chest, I must confess. I still get those butterflies every time I look you in your big, beautiful brown eyes. It's like I've died and gone to paradise where I can hold you from moonlight to sunrise and look you in your eyes to say this last line, I love you until the sun dies. <laughs> These walls could talk. If these walls could talk, they could see the nonsense that goes on here every day. The walls would have a hard time standing from all the stress that would be on their shoulders. If these walls could talk, they would scream from all the sticks and stones to try to break their bones. The words that people lash out are hailing on us like bullets from military drones. The bloodshed and tears that happen after school hours are never seen. Because when you walk in the building, you gotta be able to talk the talk, but only the strong can walk the walk. If these walls could talk, their eyes would be rolling like bowling balls from all the nonsense these white privileged teachers say. The teachers don't really get where we come from because they simply just haven't lived our lives. There are only a select few that really care to ask us what's wrong or to check in to see that we are still breathing okay. But the most support some teachers give is that little annoying tap on the desk, hearing their nails strike the desk over and over makes me wish that their nails would just cave in so that noise would stop. These walls could talk, but in reality, only a few of us are functioning correctly. Others have our lungs pushed to the sky like Simba from Lion King. If these walls could talk, they would be jittery and fidgety from all the built up anger and aggression that's been created over the years. Just like a drug addict, the wall wouldn't be able to hold still. The only way to hold it down is by taking some sort of a pill. The way people act like snakes, slithering into everyone's business, makes me feel like I am constricted like the snakes are slowly gripping at my throat. I feel the scales digging into my throat. The air is spinning, my vision is blurring, unable to make eye contact, pause. As I stare at the floor when I walk, seems like I've let this talk get to me. The snakes have won. Now they stand in the back hissing, as I feel I have failed, letting all their talk and whispering get to me. If these walls could talk, they would slowly break away, almost unable to hold itself up. As the wall top was over, its skin thinning and blood draining out, its will to get back up has run out. The lights dim, fade to black, the wall is no longer able to talk. I shine so bright that you could see your own reflection in me. I thought that you would know not to enter when I've just been clean, but Mr. Clean can't keep away all the dirty guys. 
Your nose hair tickles, tiny parts of your nose hair ticking. You sneeze and I bless you, but the only time you feel the need to bless me is if in bed I'm sad. Sorrow filled, sacred fills, but these are emotions that come and knock on my door, then barge in every too often. Even when I tell them to go away, I'm tired. But tiredness never seems to want to lay down and rest, I'm sorry. Sorry is a five letter word that spells out more emotions than it seems. It holds much more meaning than taking your brother's cookie when he said don't eat it, that man. He took my cookies when I told him not to touch it. He filled me up and left my tub with crumbs, I'm helpless. Helplessness, I had been deprived of my power and he touched me against my will. I told him to stop, but I don't think he ever will. Why did I feel as if I was in the wrong even though he had no right to touch on my body? I know that this man is a person that you say you love, but why is this man trying to love on my unlovable body? He told me that I am worthless with this jewel in between my legs is treasure. Pleasure is something he is only supposed to obtain from a woman and not and far from it. So mama, please tell me why you acted as if you didn't know. He stopped getting his fill off you so he could get his fills on me. When affection is not worked on you every day, you should know that it's being applied somewhere else. My stomach, you see it twisted like the doorknob, and I'm wondering who even gave you a copy of my spare key. My mama's arm still enveloped him in waves of love, but what she didn't know was that he was already swimming in my body. See, how is it that he kept stroking in my ocean, and I, I was the one who ended up choking. You lathered me with sin and played with my rubber ducky. Cleaning products seem to be able to fight everything but you. Hopes of being vacant will wash down my drain while disappointment trip from my voice. Old 2000 jams can't juice up this joint and dirty laundry won't ever get clean when it comes to this point. It's pitch black, so please paint me out a better picture. Positive signs with plastic on the plastic picture. Play for a playboy, you always seem to leave my bathroom, please. Just because you have to get down to take materials from me does not mean I have to get on my knees for you. Don't you know that curtains down me keep out? I'm sorry, but my room is in use right now. How many times do I have to go through you leaving me bloody and me cleaning myself up again? I'm tired of the suffering. This ache I have been afflicted by has drowning me in pain. I never asked you to wash up inside of me or even to play with my rubber duck. You made my temple unholy and unsanitary. You made my private place a place where trespassers could play with my private parts. And I'm wondering, whoever gave you a copy of my spare key? On October 16th of 2016, I watched her make her third appointment with God. I know I shouldn't have been out so late, and Mama, I'm sorry. But Mama, why are you constantly telling me that you're sorry? It's OK. I never liked the smell of hospitals, either. I always thought superheroes were just comic strips of my imagination. But where do you begin to explain where she died twice and was able to breathe again? Wonder Woman, what happened to your super suit? Your nemesis have been knocking on your body since day one. They just want to make a home out of you. They've dug underground tunnels into your veins, deposits of ammunition and warfare. I know your army isn't strong enough. I know cancer has been around since volume one, but I thought you won this fight issues ago. I'm reminded page by page of how you made yourself seem so invincible. But your pain has become more visible. You were my hero. But superheroes are humans too. She, I could never extinguish that fire that she burned inside of her. Her sparks? could be seen from miles away. I thought that those smoke rings would give her the ability to fly. Mama, why do you find that there are more than just 1,000 ways to die? Call this habit unhealthy, but she had a garden growing inside her chest. They say that every rose has its thorns, but I'd let it prick me until they got every last drop just to save you, Mama. I'm not even 18 yet. Why did you put your life in my hands when you were never laid down to sleep? Your Iron Woman brass armor's too heavy, too cloudy. Mommy, where is your umbrella to protect me? A remedy for my insanity's sake. It's like I'm losing a part of me. Dr. Strange. 
I know your hands work like magic, but she's burned through three lives like the last three times. I've thought about suicide squadliness. They should really recall you, Catwoman. I counted four billion, four billion stars in her eyes, yet she always wore the same 50. Her stilettos will always be too big for me to fill, but she always makes sure I stood tall, so thank you for making female mean fighter, thank you. For making fighter mean survivor, for she is not a hero that gets remembered, but a legend that will never die. always been more to my footstep than just a shadow. Latched onto me like a shackle, my disease is my slave master. Selling my years off quicker than the latest iPhones, but never mind the new features, because my battery life will always die out too quickly. Can't even get around without my own brain, threatening to update my software. I'm so used to swiping away that my hands start finger spelling out reminders. I can't even hold a gun to my temple. So what the hell do I keep trying? I just pray a hand emoji that this time I can actually pull the trigger. A gunshot so godly that I become the sacrificial poet. And maybe that's why my feet don't speak the same language as the ground anymore, as above, but so below. Like I found home in a charging cable noose. Like I've been crucified on a radio tower. I have mastered the art of auto boxing out my pain. That you couldn't tell that the greatest symptom of any physical illness really has nothing to do with the body, but more about the system diagnostics. I am diagnosed with overdosing on overthinking. Then it should know that computers don't really sleep if you just close them. Yeah. I am closed in, and all I do is shut down, restart, freeze up, glitch, glitch, glitch. Everything about me says glitch. That I don't know what it's like to be a normally functioning human anymore. I just want to be a normally functioning human a little more. No, I just want to be free. My programmer, I mean slave master, has DNA coded me to be this way. Control, alt, deleted my existence, wiped out my motherboard. I can't even talk to my mother anymore without her trying to break down my firewalls, without a virus warning blinking onto my screen. Whenever my dad tells me he loves me, oh no, oh no, I think, I think, I think, oh no, I think it's happening again. There is not that much time to go before 20% the rest of my happiness into oblivion. And when living in a virtual reality, there is no way out. Cause all I do is Why am I the voice? Why when I'm the only black kid in the classroom I'm supposed to have all the answers for my entire race? Why do I need six dictionaries, three thesauruses, and a scholarly article just to explain to you why you shouldn't say Nigga. Why do I need to know every bit of my history to tell you that bantu knots aren't called mini twisted buns okay. and box bra boxer braids are not cornrows? Okay. And why do I need to know every why do I need to know all of this in 16 bars or less? So yes, it's possible. Possible for me not to know all the answers, but to know enough to know you can't do that. You can't tell an entire race, an entire culture, that they have to be what you want them to be. You can't take my skin off and wear it. You can't take the ghetto clothes off my back and call them chic. You can't rip my hair from my scalp and name it edgy. You can't, tell, you can't take my big ass lips and my curvaceous hips and mold your lips to call them your own. You can't do that. Because I am not your mascot. 
I am not your mad black woman. I am not your mochaccino chocolate chip honey. I am not just entertainment when you want it, then target practice when you need it. The wealth of appropriation and assimilation stay fresh on my skin, fresh from the crack of your privilege whip, unbearable to my mind, I scream. And I will scream until my throat is raw and my head is pounding. I will scream until my heart hurts and my soul is aching. I will scream until you understand that I have a voice, but I am not the only voice. I am not the only voice. Twelve teachers were murdered fighting for educational reform in Oaxaca, Mexico. I've never been to Oaxaca, but I know it's a lot closer to home than I think. I know home smells like a bullet shell breaking into a body, it smells like the last page of a newspaper for the front face of a child or a teacher. Education has never been close to home, but it's a lot closer to death than it looks. The difference between a book and a child is that sometimes they're seven miles apart from each other, and most commonly, the teachers know the students better than the parents do. Education is hard when you're trying to stay on the line, but your family starts to divide before you begin to learn it, a formula too complicated for any student to look answers for. It is why teachers in Mexico are important, why teachers in Mexico are any steel, iron, and concrete beam built to support a country that doesn't support them. Out of the millions of teachers in Mexico, 12 teachers with activism on their lips spoke for education and reform. They all had the same fire going in their body, even had the same matching bullet entrance in their head. They were all arrested with their eyes still open, didn't even get a chance to blink, but saw the world spin off its axis while the whole world watched their heads spin into ashes. Education becomes a little more difficult when death becomes a part of the curriculum. Nobody ever asks how the students feel, how there's never a trigger warning for trauma, but it follows them like a train off its tracks. But trust in your own gut, that trespassing a border under a truck could guarantee you a safer desk to sit in. And it doesn't ask any student in Mexico how many miles they walked to school and calculate that with the amount of times they came hungry. Ask them how things are going at home. Don't be surprised when they ask you what that last word means. Ask them, ask them, ask them who their favorite hero is. And no reply dead. Twelve of them to be exact. Twelve teachers that advocated. All twelve made national TV. You could still read the names on the screen when the TV turned off. Still hear the screams of twelve generations fighting. But you probably couldn't. Sound is always hard to hear behind a wall. Always misinterpreted. Always looked over. How do you kill 12 teachers and not learn from it? This will be the first time a teacher is absent in a classroom, the first time the students are actually listening, the first time 12 teachers raised their hand at the exact same time and all got the same answer. Aren't you tired of watching or did you even bother to watch at all? Thank you. We didn't believe holy enough to stay after the dark came home. We was burdened. 
too much change to ever give ourselves to each other willingly. They be asking me about you still. Like, how come you never look people in the eyes whenever they ask about hers? What color of brown do you remember saying goodbye to? What color of brown remind you of saying goodbye? I know love don't always mean saving enough prayer at the dinner table for everyone. I, I know that because my father never had enough Jesus to stay while mama cried to me. You know how bad it hurts to be someone's first and last choice at the same time. Baby, we pick cotton. We pick cotton until our hands turn to ashes. Until our bodies disintegrated into Alabama heat. We set the churches inside each other on fire, call it divine order. Party quits on Sunday, baby. I've been running this whole week and you ain't even checked to see if I died yet. You know what all people should know war doesn't always kill you. Daddy was dragged out of battlefield by mama. She still got scars all covered in dry blood. They told me God don't like ugly. Are people covered in sin? You know how many times I prayed for us while you slept? Well, our beds didn't know how to hold both of us in it together. We love this way, ruined and wrong. You don't go giving the worst parts of yourself to anyone and be okay with it. You know what died the day we did. I don't even know if this is heaven, but I be looking for you still. Asking the things that follow me if you still sleeping. They don't talk back, and neither does God. But I miss your voice sometimes, I do. Made up for the applause that you failed to give me throughout the years since you went to therapy. 
and you wasn't there for anything. I was all for getting up at 4 and 5 a.m. for the four-hour drive. Jumping into your arms was plunging into life because that is all daddy ever did. At the time, how could I have known the promises of the throne right out the window? You didn't have one in your cell. Maybe you did it on your way back home. I mean, you tell me. Mama can't stand you anymore, and she says she can't stand me either because I look just like you. Maybe my skin is too light, my hair, smile, and height isn't right for her liking. Yeah, most likely. Mama says stop looking out the window. The longer you look, the longer it'll take for him to get here. But we couldn't help it. So we looked and looked and looked and we looked some more. This eventually became a chore. You had to come this time because you promised you would, but I didn't know about locking promises then, so maybe that's why you didn't keep it. You said that you missed me. And I've heard you say, don't start what you can't finish. And you started a family. And people say, family's supposed to be forever to me. You weren't supposed to leave, so daddy, why didn't you stay? So you have four pairs of eyes glued to the driveway, four hearts buckled up on the highway, swinging to abandonment and disappointment. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Tell me, do you even burn from lying so much? Or have the tears you cry put, have the tears I've cried put out all the flames? Daddy loves you. Daddy will be out and will see you soon. What Daddy felt to tell me is that out means gone, and it didn't take long for you to fulfill that promise and break the rest. It didn't take long for you to put that ache in my chest. When we would say goodbye, you said that you loved me every time, and quite frankly, I don't even believe it anymore. I've been burnt into ambers, waiting for you to surrender your love to me. Now, what did I do for you to treat me like this? You can stay over there and worship her and her kids, but I can't even get a text asking how I've been. Where were you? We're behind on bills, low on food, and needed new shoes. You weren't there, and you didn't care. You claim that you do, but you don't. Since you've been out, you've given alcohol more attention than you've ever given me. I kept every birthday card you sent me because I thought that ain't blood love. That the elegant handwriting and beautiful words meant something. To you, they meant nothing. They were sacred to me. I treated those letters and cards better than I've ever treated the Bible. And you can call me a daughter, but I can't call you a father because you don't deserve that title. And maybe somewhere in your drunk stumbling, you stumped upon and crushed, that you lo and crushed the love that you had for me. And maybe somewhere upon your drunk mumbling, you stated how little I mean to you, but I just didn't catch it because I didn't want to. <laughs> Got to catch my breath. I can't breathe. Tired of running from reality. You didn't believe me when I told you how they forced themselves inside of me, and that hurt more than anything that they ever did. Because you choose and pick anything or anyone over your kids, but I pretend it didn't happen. When I was suicidal, pulling on night because I was having nightmares and feeling down and depressed, you said you didn't care. But I pretend it didn't happen. My heart is just so big that no matter how much you hurt me and no matter what you do, I always give you another chance and I'll forgive you. To him, this is just me whistling in the wind. I am not daddy's little girl anymore, but I'm daddy's little girl. My homie said he felt like he might die today. All right. And I ain't know what to say, but I felt the pain. I always see the cloudy days. Wish I was still a kid again. All my crazy rowdy ways, action figures when it was too wet to play. Yeah. But they, they wet these young kids up these days. Black bodies like his are red lead, blood staining oh, pavement. Yeah. He missed the bus daily, got his parents mixed up in a funk. Instead, he's trying to be like everybody but himself. Trying to be like everybody but himself, switching personas like similes on loose leaf paper. He doesn't know what that's gonna get him. He does it just to fit in around his teachers. He don't know how to act. He ain't got no ambition because they, they only wanna see him in the system, but he wants to see his future unravel. So he's searching for the X, like on them treasure maps, wishing, planning, your future was really as easy as that, but it's not. 
When men with badges come like street sweepers, killing kids, call it cleaning up the streets. Found all those boys unarmed, and now question why we allow steel to line our waistbands. I look over my shoulder when I walk alone. Questioning what's going on in the city I call home when it don't feel too home like mama calls every time shots echo too close to home. I've had that same feeling before. The feeling that lingers like cigarette smoke around me and too many of my friends. We call, some call it paranoia, we call it survival. Why the fuck do I have to survive? Why does it feel like I was putting a predator's den at birth and my skin reads prey, reads victim, reads chalk outline, CNN news headline, Twitter hashtag, he was taken before his time. I told my homie that I felt like I might die today. The look on his face told me he didn't know what to say, but he definitely felt the pain like it was a blueprint to all black boys encoded in our DNA to haunt us. It haunts me, wakes me from my sleep sometimes, makes me scared to have a black son because he'd be labeled victim like me, and I don't know how I'd have that talk with him. But I know it would have to happen because it's a survival tactic, and we're all just trying to survive. It's just a part of the reality we live in. It's broken and we've yet to find the tools to fix it, and sometimes I question if we ever will. But I know that won't stop me, because they'll never, never break a black man's will. is like falling asleep, then I guess I have insomnia. I've been laying here counting sheep for hours, watching each one trot by peacefully. I don't want to fall. I've never been high, but I'm still afraid of the trip down. Even when he was next to me, hand in hand, not only did we fall, we jumped soaring head over heels. I still wear those battle scars over my heart proudly. I'm proud of myself for not falling asleep everywhere I go, for not sleeping with everyone I know. I broke the mold of the Harris girls. Maybe that's why my last name is Alexander instead. I added the word scholarships in college to the family dictionary. Two words that will be well known when I'm done. I'm done with all the negativity, dead and gone to all the negativity. Welcome home by positivity. She even threw a party for me. The welcome mat was a bit dirty and no one popped up from behind the scenes to surprise me. But surprise me and positivity will throw our own goddamn party. Yeah. Music so loud, the whole world is gonna know about me and her. Know that nothing or no one is gonna stop me from doing me. Know that nothing or no one is gonna stop me from partying because we will dance all night. We have been dancing all night ever since I tripped and fell into an abyss of her love ever since counting sheep became more of a hobby than a necessity, I have fallen in love with positivity. I have finally fallen asleep. Good night. that you're not vital, but every time you're not around me, my heart somehow manages to stop beating. Inhale, exhale, I'm not breathing, and I haven't since I met you. See, I've managed to sleep since think and march to the beat of your drum. I salute to your way of life and surrender to the siren-like sounds that call out to me, put me under your hypnotic trance. Tell me the task that must be done, and I will do never fell short of completing, and after completion, your smile will usually be enough reward. 
but in the rare moments of time when the spinner spun and landed on me, with the one out of 100 chance it would, I patiently waited for my well-deserved reciprocity. But see, those were the times when you left me on scene and put me on mute. Your open lines of love turned pendulum. I would come, you'd leave, push me away, then wait till I'm gone, negative attraction. One way streets you drive down to find me waiting at the end. I was searched for you, but you are a dead end. And through it all, I was still willing to hold on. But evil is ignorance, and you wore them both perfectly on your sleeve. So you left me, found a new hole, and then finally fested up enough decency to come and sweep up my shattered elastic heart, mind, and soul. I am beaten and worn to the souls. But if you must throw me away into the memory pile of yesterday, which will eventually end up being forgotten, I just add one last request. Color me pretty. Like a work of art, I am your Mona Lisa, gazing at handcrafted starry nights. Picasso, my existence, Maya Angelou, running through my ears, please leave me complete with a content of life. Seduce, sedate, misuse, and elate my emotions one last time. Put me on that roller coaster, climax so high, fallen action so steep, a loopity loop around every bend, and when motion sickness begins to set in, make me yours once more. Hold me tight and look into my eyes with every ounce of love possible. Give me your all in this moment, and I will be willing to let go. Frozen. No super suit can save you. No matter how fast you run on water, no matter how cold we might think our skin color is, they will always keep us away from our drive. No wonder they be trying to keep our dreams in parks. Give me a ball because a basket is the only thing I know how to shoot for. Like no matter how good I am a shooter, cops will always shoot better. We all know cops would kill to shoot people like me. All know cops shoot to kill people like me. Just as long as you know that jumpsuits are the only thing this world gives us, I am sorry. But although this is a Disney movie, we both know fairy tales don't go good with black people. Tell me, were you expecting a happily ever after too? Expecting us to ride out in the same horses they stole from us years ago, Frozone. You are only incredible when you do something right for this nation. You are no Avenger, you are a soldier. And your number one job is to sacrifice yourself to a country that didn't want you in the first place. You are no Captain America, always wants to blame us as a victim when they have no one else to accuse. This system has my head spinning in the 360 degrees counterclockwise, trying to go back in time. Our backs hit concrete one too many times. How many times will they call this genocide an accident? Frozone, you are a midnight accident dressed in sky blue. Frozone, no matter how incredible you think you are, those credits won't get you anywhere. Where no matter how many women you save, you will always be the white man's son, boy, nigga, sidekick. They've kicked you in the side for so long, but you don't know what it feels like to stand up straight. Tell me, do you ever get tired sometimes? And I feel like some days this thing called life gets a little too heavy for your face to handle. I'm sorry that they raised us to think the exact same way, to stand up for a nation that wouldn't stand up for you. Put your hand over your chest to all the people who played my people like a game of chess scream at the top of your lungs, to all the women who died trying to save onto their tongues and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for none. Where's my Prince Charming at? I'm queer, I'm here, and I'm pretty sure everyone's over it.
Like, you know, there are those two other gay guys at school, but I'm still left thirsting for a taste of that ever so sweet rainbow. That fiery red passion so strong that it could burn away any self-consciousness about me holding his hand in public. That orange enthusiasm that makes me want to hang out with him every single day. That smile that brings me happiness, which is as bright and as yellow as the sun. Those walks on green grass in which you could walk and walk and walk for hours, yet still miss him when he's gone for minutes. That blue palm of us cuddling till we fall asleep in each other's arms. That lust for one another that explodes into purple ecstasy. It feels like I've been searching for centuries in these three years. Yet I refuse to be dismayed. I'll climb homophobic mountains. I'll swim through heteronormative ocean. I'll walk through rejecting deserts. And I'll persevere through self-hating swamps. Even if my family says the prince I'm pursuing is really a dragon in disguise. Even if improper suitors come to me and give me fiery red arguments or orange lies that turns into yellow fear and makes me groan with envy over that guy that's just a friend. We could all torture each other till we're left feeling blue with purple bruises on our hearts. It would all be worth it if I find my prince. So whether he's a Florian, a Philip, an Eric, or an Aladdin, I'm coming for him. They want us to die. This is a genocide. They're trying to deny some people so dumb they believe the lies. Real evidence they hide. Black or white, it don't matter as long as we rich. It won't matter as long as we smart. It won't matter. They want us dead. Black blood splatter. He had his hands up saying don't shoot, but his life don't matter. She knew too much. They talked about the way she raised her son and how she sued the government, but she don't matter. When will we matter? When will we matter? When will we matter? What you see, what you hear, ain't always the truth. They call us thugs, say we on drugs, killing us off one by one until we are all gone. If you get in the way, you're going with us. They put us in projects because we are just projects. Testing us to see if we are just like the statistics and protesting ain't helping enough. We all see it. We need something different. We need justice. We need our rights. We need a new way of life because this ain't working no more. It never worked in our favor. Why do you think we are mad? You slaved us, made us look like we ain't worth nothing. Now we evolving. You trying to get rid of us? <laughs> You'll never get rid of us because we'll never give up and we'll never be treated equal. We'll only be treated equal or nothing. That ain't enough. We need to be treated like us, like the kings and queens we are. We need to stand as one. No more hiding in the shadows of this genocide. No more bulletproof vests. Bullets bounce off our chests because we are indestructible. But y'all don't hear me though. Being distracted by remix classics and challenges that ain't challenging because we don't matter. But we take up too much mass and space so we must matter. <laughs> best friends with us. He's often a dinner guest at our house, but when he tells jokes, only our stomachs laugh while our hearts ache. Poor makes $13, a family of four's monthly benefit of food stamps. Poor eats everything in pantry before we even see it. He made food go rotten before it was even in fridge. He ate after school snack before I even got home. Poor sounds like your stomach grumbling in the middle of class and all heads turning your way. Yes, poor follows me to school and when they see him, they point at my clothes. Poor looks like she wore that outfit for the second time this week. Phone call home. Poor makes my shoes swiss and demands me to wear them. He turns G 
jeans into quilt patchwork for no price or forces me to go thrifting in free closet because new clothes are never an option for. I hate it when you beg mom to go shopping with us. Car empty, heart empty, and no matter how little we buy, pockets always empty. Poor says we can't afford much for Christmas, birthday, and everything in between. So why does he write zeros into bank account when bills are due? When poor sleeps with me, he isn't warm. No matter how many blankets I cover with, poor smells like gas, stove, heated house in winter because furnace won't turn on. Poor when poor stops faucets, tears, the dishes never seem to get done. Poor makes mama tear and worry about home. Can we keep house when rent's due? Can we find shelter when we need to? Poor, I'll never understand why you stuff yourself into our pockets and cupboards and fridges. Will you ever die? Why is our population in correlation with poverty? Why is our population in correlation with poverty? Why does poor live in our houses and litter our streets? How can you call us lazy when you don't even hang us up now? You have the economy do it while well, America is sick of doing your dirty laundry, but maybe it's a few thousand years too late for you to learn how to do it yourself. So don't call us outrageous when you enrage us by saying you don't hang us and you never enslaved us. Well, that's why we're a majority of the criminals you keep a strict eye on these days. And that's why we're the ones hanging up to dry by the poverty line. Well, America is not picking up your dry cleaning anymore, no matter how much money you have to pay her with. So why can you keep billions while we sit here penniless, pondering the prisons paid the poverty you give to us? Why is it that you keep us chained to the hungry beast when we're the ones starving for more food, power, bills, you see, and we can't pay our bills, you see, but you can't see what ain't forced on you like I can't see the money sacks that you made off of our cotton bags. Well, you can say that there's beauty in the struggle and ugliness in the success, but it's hard for us to find that beauty when we're stressed about our pockets being blessed.
My grandmother is sitting in a hospital bed on her 86th birthday, low-fat chocolate cupcake provided by the blonde-haired nurse. I have never seen sprinkles look so sad. Desperation decorated the frosting. We were doing everything we could to cheer her up. This is the first day my grandmother will forget my name, but she'll keep grinning like she always does. She laughs at pain and tells us not to worry about it. Frown lines and smiles are interchangeable. In her cheeks, she tucks them both in her afro. But yesterday, before surgery, she had to cut all her hair off today. She keeps reaching for it, forgetting that it's not there this year. She started reaching for things that she forgets are there. I know that my name is lynched on the tip of her tongue, but I can't help but to be hung on the taste of this rejection. Alzheimer's and my pride are two things that I try hard to swallow. My grandma looks at me. Her eyes are wide with questions that I don't have the answers to, like why does this hurt so much and when did getting old to stop being fun and how can you not remember someone that you love? She forgets the words to the happy birthday song and we don't know how many happy birthdays she has left. This is how Jesus must have felt on the cross, all miracle and all martyr at the same damn time. I never felt more like holding on and letting go in my life. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Dear, my hands still shake just thinking about it. My grandma used to tell me the gods got the whole white world in his fist lately. I've been praying that he don't squeeze the fight out of her too soon. I never thought about how much of a battle it was to breathe until I started seeing my grandma's life in every breath. But I would give her both of my lungs like the last supper if that meant that life would not Judas her memories. How can your own mind turn on you? Alzheimer's is a hard pill to swallow. There is no medicine to help cope with this one. I look at my grandma. My eyes are wide with questions and I remember when she used to have all the answers to remember when life didn't hurt this much. Grandma, please, don't forget the words to the happy birthday song. Tell me that you have a million happy birthdays left. Pinky promised me all the things you already let go but still want to hold on to. Grandma, I feel like Jesus on the cross. Your brain has been adorned in the crown made out of thorns. Not even you can reach up to touch it anymore. Grandma, please. Grandma, please, don't let your mind make a martyr out of you. I've been working on just recently. It's not complete, but I, I just had a day to see y'all. It's true. So um, go ahead and hit that dream on beat. And Dream of power, this is the dream of power, this is the dream of power, so we just 
Let's go.